I wasn't sure how to approach this video because my plant setup is not done. The two big collections in my life, I guess, are plants and tattoos. And whenever people ask to see them all together, I'm like, I don't want to share them until in my head they're finished and they're ready. I'm starting to learn that I don't actually know where finished is. And so I just decided to share the plants the way they are currently. So just consider this a snapshot in a moment in time. Some plants are growing like crazy right now. Some plants hate me right now. And there's still things that I need to repot, support and tend to. But that's okay. And today I'm just going to take you on a little tour of how they are currently. And I would also like to say a big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Over on my Squarespace website, I've put together an FAQ of all the questions which I get asked super regularly, both in my comments on here and over on Instagram. So if there's something you want to know, jump over there and I may have answered it for you. I also want to preface this by saying that I am by no means an expert. I started getting plants in about 2014, I think. I had just like a few little ones in my apartment, but it didn't really become a problem like this until 2017, I would say. And I'd love to see in the comments below if you have a favorite plant, Please tell me what it is. I wasn't really sure how to start this video, whether to start with the biggest plant or the smallest plant or my newest plant or my oldest plant. So what I've decided to do instead is just go room by room. Okay, so let's start in the lounge room here. So I thought I'll just go around and show you what's here. Starting off, if you can hear some banging around, it's Mitch doing his weight training outside. We've got a very large snake plant here. This thing, when it's on the stand, it comes up to my jaw. I think they're pretty cool. Next, jumping over here, we have a little philodendron hope. I really want it to grow big. I, I love the look of the big ones, um, but it's been so hard to find them. So I ended up getting this little mid-size one and I think it's cute. I got this plant pot actually just from Ikea because in the photos, it looked cool. It looked like a goblet sort of thing. It looks like a trash can. Like it legitimately looks like a trash can. Coming up here, we have my big, big, big totem Adansoni, and it likes to climb. So you can see, I'm gonna have to cut these off because it's it's got more growth coming out and it's gone way past the trellis. Back behind the TV, bear with me. This is like absolute pandemonium back here. So I've got a snake plant who's starting to have babies. I meant to say spider plant. I've got my microgreens, which I planted. This one is super cool. Um, I believe it's called a cardboard palm. I have it bookmarked in my phone. We have a little Rojo Congo and a peace lily. This one, I'm not sure if you can see with this lighting so contrasted right now, but it's actually a lighter variegation than the other peace lily that I have. Like the leaves are very, very pale. Now I may need to go outside to show you these. but this is, I guess it's like a little propagation station set up on the window. Also, tip for anyone who wants to set it up in a precarious place like this is use, where is it? See that? Tack. Because it's water and because the TV is here, I've just tacked them onto the sill. So just in case they get bumped, they're not gonna go flying. In this corner, we have like my medium sized Monstera Deliciosa who has a new leaf. And when I say medium, like it's still pretty big. That's it compared to my hand, but it's not as big as this one. I've had this one for a few years now and it's just plodding along, doing its own thing. Next to it, we have an umbrella tree. I love umbrella trees. I think they're so cool once they start to get a bit of height on them. They get this really stable trunk. Look, you can see that's, it's woody. And I just really like how glossy they are. Now, this plant currently hates me. I have to repot it. It's my variegated umbrella tree. It was doing so well in our last house. And then when we moved here, it had a tantrum. So I tried repotting it and then it still continued to have a tantrum. So we'll see. 
I've got a much bigger Rojo Congo here. If you're wondering how I get the leaves so shiny, I clean them. I like to use a white oil spray. Um, I've shown it in a few other videos. Now, this guy here looks like a Monstera Deliciosa, but it's actually a Monstera Tori or Tori. I don't know how to pronounce it, to be honest. He's a little bit jumbled up at the moment, but that's okay. He's supported on his moss pole. So I want to try and get this one more vertical. So I'm trying to train it to go up. Now we have a fun one, which is my Monster Thai Constellation. Um, so it's variegated. In case there's any people who don't know or haven't seen them before. So this plant has less chlorophyll, so it does need to get more light. I do also have another one here, but this one's just more speckly. It doesn't have the big patches of white like the other one does. This little guy over here is still in its nursery pot. I need to get a cover pot for it or a stand or something. Also, the reason that I have stands is because both the dogs are fine and our two tiny Netherland dwarf bunnies are fine, but Ralph sometimes likes to lie in the soil. He just lies in it, he just chills out, but when he jumps out, he just makes a mess. So I've just put some of them up there so he doesn't use it as a bed. Anyway, back to this pine. I love this tree. This tree came with a certificate of authenticity to show that it is a Woolamai pine. Obviously this is just a baby one. It has been growing. It's got two new like from leaf thingies on them. I think it's one of the oldest trees ever recorded. In nature, these grow huge, like huge, huge, huge. And they found fossils of this particular type of tree and it was presumed extinct. And it wasn't until 1994, a bushwalker outside of Sydney actually discovered a grove of them. And they've discovered two more since then. Now, because it is rare, you're probably like, why the hell do you have it in your house? And I'll tell you why I have it in my house. Because the cultivation and sale of these plants is a really big part of their conservation strategy. So they make small amounts of them available every now and again. And what you pay to have them actually helps fund their research and fund their conservation. Now this is one plant that I am so proud of. It is currently three plants Put together. It's a Raphidophora tetrasperma, so its nickname is Mini Monstera because it does look like a miniature version of the Monstera. When I first got this plant in 2018, it was literally two leaves on a stem. And then there was one plant video that I did where it might have been about this tall, maybe a little bit less. Anyway, and I put it on a moss pole and I was like, I know the moss pole is too big for the plant, but it's gonna grow. And it grew. And it grew and it grew and it grew and it grew. And now we're about to go across the ceiling which I'm really excited about I want to like go all the way over it's just put out three new leaves and we're still in winter I actually can't wait to see what this plant does in spring and summer let me tell you about this guy this plant is large <laughs> like very large I actually found this, um, someone was selling it off Facebook Marketplace. And when I bought it, I don't think it had been repot in like, I don't know, eight years, honestly. Okay, so a lot of the leaves looked like this, really damaged, really just like, not good. But it was still big and I was like, oh, you know what? Like, I just want to get it and I want to put it in my lounge room and I want to help it live. And we do have a new leaf coming through on here. Let me show you exactly how big it is and for perspective i'm like somewhere between five foot seven and five foot eight it's got a stake and it's got a moss pole just to give it something to lean onto and even though it's winter it's still putting out leaves so we've got that new one coming through there and then this one only just opened up about two weeks ago so we are not doing too bad for winter first off we have a fatsia japonica i don't know how to say that properly it's like my high five plant because every time that's my office in there. And every time I walk past it, I just give a little high five. Now behind that, we have got a little tension rod with three hanging plants. So sometimes I change out what is in here. We have a little begonia. I was never a huge fan of begonias. Like I don't like plants that have like these really soft leaves. I find that I'm better with plants that are like really hardy just because I'm someone who tends to underwater rather than overwater. But I thought this was beautiful and it's doing quite well. It's got some new growth coming through. Then we have a little Norfolk gem, which kind of looks like a type of fern, but it is not. And then feel free to educate me in the comments if I'm wrong. I believe this type of pothos is called a pothos enjoy, but I really like the variegation on its leaves. 
This is my little workbench area. This is where you see me film a lot of recipes simply because our kitchen is dark. So I set this up literally just for better looking content. I do have a plant light up here. I've switched it off so that you can see the colors of the plants. That's what it looks like because this corner does get dark, but I like having just like a whole stack of plants up there. I'll just turn it off before I get ahead of myself. So I have a big peace lily here and it is actually flowering at the moment. I have a love hate relationship with peace lilies. Like I like them, but I find them really moody and temperamental. In my trolley I have another little variegated pothos and then coming up here we've got some spring onions growing there, little pillia babies. They were pups that came off this pillia over here from the kitchen table and it's already got new ones coming back through. I know this looks super weird, but I'm just waiting for it to grow slips. Back here, we have a little basil cutting, which I wasn't sure if that was going to work. I took a cutting off my other basil plant. I need to put some more water in here actually, but it's already got roots coming through. I love this little plant. It's one of my little babies. It's a button fern. I don't know, I just think it's so cute. And we have some more propagations going in here. I've got pothos and a heart leaf philodendron. Once you have enough plants, it just becomes an exponential problem because you can get so many cuttings of the plants you already have. It's ridiculous. Back here, we've got a little marimo moss ball. If you ever had a fish, your instinct is to probably just like put it in the water and leave it alone. But like any plant, you need to clean it so it can use the light effectively so you actually can pull it out of water and rinse it on a running water it feels so fuzzy over here we have my basil now i have never been good at keeping basil alive so the way i'm growing this one is just straight in water the roots are touching the water but the stems are not and it seems to be happy here's a little clover plant i know that sounds weird i ordered some dried herbs from a place and they also sent me some clover seeds so i just planted them and now i have a clover plant i know it's a weed but you really can say the same about a lot of houseplants. Okay, this name is a mouthful and I'm going to get it wrong. Um, it's a Peperomia angulata rocca verde. I know absolutely for sure that this is pet friendly. I used to have a bigger one of these. Oh, oh my gosh. Um, last year we had such a bad heat wave. I took them outside in the morning to water them. I didn't know it was gonna be that hot. Where I live, the weather is so temperamental. It can change so rapidly. And I took them out in the morning to water them, I left them out on the balcony, which is normally fine. And I'd bring them back in, in the afternoon and then we went out and it was so hot a couple recovered but a lot of them didn't i lost like a variegated peace lily and a few other things so now i try to just make sure that my plants have cover pots so like this where i've got the nursery pot inside the cover pot and that way i don't have to move them to water them and i know that they're safe inside Over here, we have my very large, taller than me, fiddle leaf fig. I also find this plant really temperamental, but since we've been in this place, it's actually loving it a lot better. It's popped out so many new leaves since we moved in here. Now I have this cart from Adairs and it's literally just for plants. If I didn't have plants here, I don't think I would even own this thing. You know what's ridiculous when the number of plants that you own dictates the furniture in your house. Down the bottom here, I have a little pothos on a totem and it's just a variegated kind and you'll, you'll find like throughout my house, I have lots of pothos, I have lots of monstera because I find they grow so quickly and I've been able to propagate so many. This big one here who's taking over the top of the cart is a Hartley philodendron. So its leaves are pretty large and I've also been training it to grow up the wall at the moment. I jumped in and I counted it yesterday and it has 16 new leaves coming out at one time. Like it, it's winter, like it's not even spring here yet and it's pushing out 16 leaves at once. If that's not ridiculous, I don't know. Like even here, one, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, just in that one area. Nodes in the water, and I'm just trying to encourage it to root up at the moment so that I can plant it. This one actually snapped off the big one, which is in my bedroom, which I'll show you guys at some point. And it's already starting to develop some roots. So I'll let it get a more stable root system before I plant it. Now this is my big ZZ plant. So it's in a 25 millimeter pot. It's got a lot of growth on it. Uh, I love these ones. I've, I've said before, they're super hardy. They really don't need much from you. Just don't overwater of them and you'll be fine. Here we have my totem devil's ivy. I love this plant for the size of its leaves. Like, are you serious? Are you serious? Now this one is on a wood totem and look at, like, that is ridiculous. It's so strong. And I've taken heaps of cuttings off this plant because it just continually outgrows the totem. Philodendron macan or mecan. 
Oh, and before I forget, just putting this one cozied away out of the sunlight at the moment. This is my Oxalis. It's gone dormant for the winter. It flowered like crazy and then it died back. My mistake for letting it flower but um, it'll come back in spring. They just go dormant periodically. I've had this for ages now. It has gone dormant once before, so I reckon he'll be back around, I don't know, two months maybe? Normally where I would keep it is right here where I've got this stingray alocasia. Over here we have an umbrella tree who desperately needs repotting. So I do have a little wooden stake in there, but he has definitely outgrown it and he is growing towards the sunlight. Now I can't remember specifically what kind of fern this is. Maybe it's a bird's this nest fern. This one here fern. is if anyone a philodendron can help me out, birkin. I'd love that. It's got so much new growth on it. It's really cute. I actually got this one from a local plant nursery called Pop Wilder. Um, in my FAQ, which I'll link in the here description box, got a I'll also baby leave links to some of my favorite plant shops in, in Melbourne. The purple version. Right. Up here, we have a bit of a mishmash. So I had a problem. Like I started putting plants up here and then as it got closer to winter, it got so dark in that corner. I'm just gonna adjust this so you can see how it looks to my eye, like in real life. I'm just trying to match it. That is probably a good accurate rep representation of what the light is actually like up there. So in summer, it's a lot brighter. Uh, but as winter started creeping through, some of my plants weren't very happy. This spider plant lost a few leaves. I got a plant light and set it up in this corner and they are literally thriving now. There's another little Adansonii, which I've grown from a cutting. I can never, is it Adansonii or Adansoni? Cause I feel like I always just go to call them Adansoni. He's trying to grow towards the roof because the light is up there. Then I believe this one is a jungle cactus. This is my fat plant. It stores water in its base and you only need to water it about once a month. Have another pothos here. Okay, now I've been confused with this one. I'm just gonna look past my Hoya obovada. Hoyas are all pet friendly, by the way. So they send out this runner before they start to put leaves out on it. So this is a squamiferm and the leaves are similar to this. But I think this is a pandatum and that's the squamiferm because the stems are all hairy on it. So they, they look really similar, but I don't think that's the same plant. Then we have another variegated pothos. So this one actually grew off a cutting from the one over here. And then we have a satin pothos in the corner there, an adansoni, there's a little epiprenum pinnatum. And we have two pilia in here. This one here is a philodendron birkin. We have some more pothos, just a variegated one and a neon one, a spider plant, another adansoni, a polybotria who, when the plant light was not here, just kept shooting up and now is putting all its leaves on the ceiling. And we've got a deliciosa and another pothos back in here. Okay, so that's it for the dining room and kitchen. I didn't want to spend too much time on the little plants up here that I already have a whole bunch of, just because we still have two rooms to go. I'm really just realizing that I look like I'm two different colors because there is a really strong sunbeam coming in. My apologies. <laughs> I'm gonna move out of this sunbeam. I also wanted to say a big thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. They are who I've been using for the last six years to host my website. So first my Eat Run Live blog and then my personal journal. Now if you have questions like how do I not have any fungus gnats? How do I get this plant to grow all the way up the wall and what the heck kind of LED lights are above my plants? Jump on over to my blog and I have the answers there in that FAQ post for you. Here's a little back end behind the scenes of what my blog looks like. I've been using Squarespace for a long time now because they are really 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 easy you can jump in set up your domain name everything is literally in the one place the way the site is built out it practically walks you through the process and if you do get stuck they have a 24 7 support team who are incredibly helpful they've also got these beautiful templates which you can take and you can customize to suit your branding and make sure that your message is being seen so if you've been thinking about starting a website or if you're not happy with where your blog or your e-commerce is currently jump on over to Squarespace. I have this URL, which I'll put on the screen and that will give you 10% off your first purchase. Running a business and a blog is hard enough. Why make it more difficult with fussy web design and not knowing how to get it to do what you want it to do? I think the process needs to be simple so that you can get on with what's important.
Okay, now we're in my office. This is a smaller collection of plants. Eventually I'd like them to like trail down. Now the dogs like to sit in this little area while I'm working. Here we've got a little baby Transcantia Zebrina in the purple version. Here we have another Philodendron Brazil and a Dwarf Alocasia Amazonica. Of course we have another Pothos here and I just made this one from cuttings. Another one here from cuttings turned into a plant. This is a Hoya Pink Princess. Going up a level we have another Edan Sonai. And then this is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite plants. It's the newest plant I've gotten. It's a Philodendron Melanochrysium. It's got super beautiful velvet leaves. I'm just gonna get it used to being in a new location first. And when it's all good, I'm going to put it on a moss totem just to encourage it to grow. This is my ZZ plant, but the raven version. Its leaves are almost black. And then we have some Hartley philodendron just propagating in this sparkling water bottle. Okay, now we enter the bedroom. This is Mitch's side of the bed. That's my side over there. He has this little plant here, which is his. Like, it's never been repot. It's never been fertilized. It got left in a bathroom with no window for two months, and yet it is somehow still alive. This is my favorite plant pot. It's from the brand Angus and Celeste. And I've got a heart leaf philodendron in here, just next to my bowl where I keep like my rings and my sunglasses and stuff like that. So this is another Monstera Deliciosa, but the way this one has grown is it's a lot different. It has no supports. It's got all its aerial roots just hanging out and about, but I like it like that. I like that it looks different from my other ones. It's just fun experimenting with plants and like setting them up different ways to see how they want to grow. Then we have have a little umbrella tree here, another Monstera, an even bigger umbrella tree, and I don't know if you can see at the back, but there's two cast iron plants in here. Now this is a Lyrata Bambino, so think fiddle leaf fig, but baby version. Then next to that I have a little palm, there's a little baby rubber plant down here, and then my super large fiddle leaf philodendron. I love this plant, I've had it for ages and ages. This is the one that had a piece break off, you can see where there's new growth coming through. And it's interesting that it's in this corner of the house plants just want to grow super tall. Directly upstairs from us in that corner up there is the Rapidophora tetrasperma. I love this pot as well. It just it reminds me of bubble gum. I don't know what it is but it's just another little pothos enjoy just on my bedside table. Okay this has to be one of my pride and joys like not just a singular plant but just this setup. Honestly when you're lying in bed it looks like a waterfall. Look this is what I see. These five plants Specifically, Pothos, Hartley Philodendron, Hartley Philodendron, Pothos, and Monstera Adansoni have been growing so quickly that a few weeks ago, these guys were literally down touching the floor. And I knew that was an accident waiting to happen. So I'll give you a closer look. So we've got quite a big Pothos up here. It was losing some of its thickness up the top before I had set up this plant light. So I did the hairpin trick. If you don't know the hairpin trick, check my last plant care video. Next, we have a bunch of Pothos propagations. I told you exponential problem guys. Pothos enjoy, more propagations, a philodendron Brazil, a Hartley philodendron, another Hartley philodendron, a marble queen Pothos, an Adansoni, and then I try to keep just the shorter plants above the door um, because otherwise they'll get ripped off. So another Hartley philodendron, this was one of my marble queen cuttings, philodendron Brazil cutting, some propagations, and another Pothos. And so many of them have been grown from other plants which I already had. Now I do have a few other bits and pieces around the place and I also have lots of fruits, vegetables and herbs growing outdoors but I might save them for another time. Now I do have a few other videos on plant care so I've left some little cards popping in on the video or I hope I remember to do that. In case you missed those I'll also link them in the description box. And thank you guys for watching, I truly appreciate you guys so much. But let's catch up in the comments below or feel free to come and say hello on Instagram. My tag is at RachelOS. Bye! Thank you.